When discussing age-proof life lessons, it's challenging to narrow them down because there are so many we can cover. However, some of those basic principles, if implemented and followed, they will enhance the quality of life and relationships at any stage. We gain inspiration from many individuals and businesses that provide a roadmap for approaching these principles. And in this podcast, we cover five adaptability, a five that include adaptability and resilience, relationships, continuous learning, self-reflection, and gratitude. And these lifelong principles remain timeless and invaluable. So stay tuned. This podcast is brought to you by DJ Works Media with resources and ideas for you at mid-career or halftime of life. Check out our online courses where we want you to not only start, but finish. Books available in all versions and songs available for immediate download with sheet music and instrumental accompaniment tracks. Our musicals are family-friendly with great music that's memorable and inspiring. Sign up at goalsforyourlife.com forward slash newsletter for weekly updates. Now to our episode. We can learn numerous life lessons from those who came before us. And by evaluating our own lives and challenges, we discover age-proof principles that enhance our quality of life, reduce stress, and boost overall well-being. Well, these lessons become increasingly relevant and effective as we age. And we also gain inspiration from those individuals and businesses that demonstrate the importance and the benefits of applying those principles. And here in this podcast, we cover five of those fundamental principles, adaptability and resilience, relationships, continuous learning, self-reflection, and gratitude. And these lifelong principles, well, they remain timeless and invaluable. And we're gonna approach each one of them. So let's start with adaptability and resilience. Well, the first science fiction fiction writer to receive a MacArthur Fellowship was celebrated for her contributions, but her path to success was fraught with obstacles. Octavia E. Butler faced a difficult start in life growing up in a low-income, single-parent household. She struggled with dyslexia, which made reading and writing very challenging. Well, despite these difficulties, she was passionate about storytelling and was determined to become a writer. Well, she faced countless rejections from publishers and had to work various odd jobs to support herself while continuing to write. Well, this is very common for many artists and entrepreneurs. I faced that same challenge. And the road is usually never easy, even though some make it just seem so glamorous, who who seem to be like living the dream. But through perseverance and adaptability, Butler, she refined her craft of writing and continued to submit her work. And her breakthrough came with the publication of Kindred, in 1979, a novel that's since become a classic. And over time, Butler won numerous prestigious awards, including the Hugo and the Nebula Awards. Well, Butler's story, she it underscores the importance of resilience and adaptability in achieving success. And despite facing significant personal and professional challenges, well, her a determination and ability to adjust to her circumstances and allowed her to overcome obstacles and leave a lasting impact on the literary world. And hers is not the only example. We can look at the journeys of other authors like J.K. Rowling, Stephen King, Maya Angelou, Hemingway, and many, many more that give us the real life examples of how important resilience and adaptability is to succeed. So let's look at a project. 
that we can apply. Name one area that you will persevere even after experiencing failure. So let's move on to relationships. Building and maintaining meaningful relationships with family, with friends and colleagues enriches our life. And relationships, they become even more important as we age with the need for communication, empathy, friendship, and mutual support. There's so many studies on this. Quality relationships are not only important individually, but in our businesses as well. REI, the company selling recreational equipment and gear, I bought a pair of shoes for them before touring Africa, in fact, builds strong connections with its customers as they emphasize educating as well as providing quality product for a lifetime of outdoor adventure and stewardship. And their co-op membership program, which provides members with annual dividends, special discounts, and access to exclusive events, fosters a sense of community and loyalty among outdoor enthusiasts. They have yay days, Y-A, Y-A-Y, yay. That's yay days in which paid days off are, are given to enjoy outdoor activities. And it reinforces their mission of developing relationships among their employees. Bill Gates and Paul Allen, as another example, example, they co-founded Microsoft and they had a partnership and friendship that started in their teenage years and continued as they built one of the most influential technology companies in the world. And though their friendship, it was often rocky, they mended their relationship as they got older and continued to support each other until Paul Allen's death. And Gates is quoted by saying that without Allen, personal computing would have not has, have existed. Mutual support and relationship building, whether it's with a colleague, a family member, or a company, well, it increases the sense of belonging and it can lower stress and increase the quality of life. And it's easy, it's so easy to let some of those relationships die with no communication or contact. However, many studies confirm the value of developing, maintaining, and pursuing quality relationships, especially through the changes that life brings. So here is the project we can apply. Call someone you haven't talked with recently just to say hi or catch up on life. Write their name down right now. So let's move on to number three, continuous learning and growth. I love this one. Embracing a lifelong learning mindset helps your mind keep, keep your mind active and open to new possibilities. And, and whether through formal education, personal hobbies, or professional development, growth and improvement are ongoing processes. There are so many resources now, including podcasts and online training. And one of my favorite examples of a successful businessman with a lifelong learning mindset is Warren Buffett. I read about him often, the chairman and CEO of Berkshire Hathaway. And Buffett is renowned for not only his investment acumen, but also for his relentless pursuit of knowledge and continuous learning, even as we talk now at 93 years old. Well, Warren Buffett is famous for his voracious reading habit. Very inspirational. He spends about 80% of his day reading and estimates that he reads between 500 and 1,000 pages daily. A lot of us don't have time for that, but, but this habit, it allows him to stay informed about various industries, economic trends, and potential investment opportunities. And he believes that knowledge accumulates like compound interest. And the more you learn, the more you can understand and apply successful principles in different areas of life and business. Well, Buffett is also known for his humility and his willingness to learn from his mistakes. And he openly discusses his investment errors and the lessons that he's learned from them, which are so invaluable, especially learning from somebody that's 93. This attitude not only helps him improve, but also builds trust and credibility with his stakeholders. And he's shown as an insatiable curiosity and an ability to adapt to the changing market conditions. 
He successfully navigated through various economic cycles and industry changes by continually updating his knowledge and his strategies. So inspiring. And one more thing I love about Buffett is that he values mentorship and he often shares his wisdom with others. I have a whole podcast on mentorship and an online program that focuses on that, the mentorship aspect. He spends time mentoring his successor at Berkshire Hathaway and is known for his annual letters to shareholders where he imparts valuable insights and lessons. What a great inspiration. We may never read as much or make as much money as Buffett does, but his example is inspiring. It's worth adapting. So here's our project. Create a short list of books or short courses to read and complete this next quarter. And give yourself a solid timeline for completion. Make it realistic, but make it measurable. So let's move on to number four, self-reflection and self-awareness. Regular self-reflection helps us understand our values, our strengths, and areas for improvement. And self-awareness allows us to make intentional choices, aligning our actions with our goals leading a more authentic life. Well, self-awareness is different, this is important, than narcissism, though they can often sometimes be confused due to their focus on the self. Well, self-awareness is the conscious knowledge of one's character, feelings, motives, and desires, and it, it involves a realistic assessment of one's strengths and weaknesses, and a willingness, this is important, a willingness to reflect and improve with empathy and the capability to form healthy relationships. That's important. Now, narcissism, on the other hand, is characterized by an excessive interest or an admiration of oneself. I always think of uh, the character in Beauty and the Beast. Gaston. <laughs> Narcissistic individual, often they often have an inflated sense of their own importance and a deep need for excessive attention and admiration or a lack of empathy for others. And this can lead to a manipulative behavior and difficulty maintaining healthy relationships. If you watch uh, Beauty and the Beast, you'll remember that character, Gaston. To understand the impact of self-awareness and narcissism in our lives, dedicating time to self-reflection, introspection, and examining our thoughts, our feelings, and behaviors provides a deeper insight and understanding of ourselves. And this life lesson is valuable at any age. And it's especially important as the focus of so many social media influ influencers, they paint a picture of this perfection and idealized happiness. So here's our project. Without comparison to others, take time to evaluate and review core values and any changes that should be made to align with those values. I have a free download, so make sure you get that. Okay, let's move on to number five, gratitude and mindfulness. Well, I began journaling when I was a sophomore in high school. My journal started as a devotional journal where I would take a sentence or two, I would write a sentence or two based on a biblical scripture that I read with my response to it. And this practice was required by my youth leader at my church as I was a future leader. And this simple practice helped me develop a lifelong habit of journaling. And over time, I recognized the increased value of journaling as it became a practice not only to write my responses to what I was learning or reading, but also to express my feelings, <laughs> the feelings that I had as a mom and, and as a wife. And journaling has supported me emotionally through raising three sons, and it has facilitated many conversations with my husband by allowing me to clarify my thoughts on paper and helped me to navigate even my business decisions. Sometimes it's hard to verbalize those things. And I realized the importance of gratitude and thankfulness is that it shifted my focus from myself to others. And the change in my mindset allowed me to appreciate what was right in my world more than what was wrong. And this feeling of gratitude, 
It's only grown through the years as my prayers have extended to now include my grown kids, my grandkids, friends, our country, and my own business. And I've adopted the phrase through the years, major on the majors, which, which helps me focus on what's most important and letting go of the rest. It's a phrase that can serve as a guiding principle for anyone at any stage of life. I've also used it in business, especially when producing my musicals with so many challenges that I was facing. So here's the project. Write at least one sentence a day focusing on gratitude in your journal or your note-taking device. It might just change your mindset around for the better. So let's apply all of this. We can add to this list of five principles with health and wellness, mindsets, and so many other solid life lessons, but the basics covered here can profoundly enhance the quality of life at any, any stage of life. And with the article that's included with this podcast, I've given you a free download so you can focus on those main areas. Embracing adaptability and resilience helps us to navigate life's inevitable changes and challenges with strength and optimism. Building and nurturing those relationships fosters a support network that enhances our emotional well-being and our personal growth. Committing to lifelong learning, it keeps our minds active and engaged, ensuring that we, we remain intellectually stimulated and curious. Regular self-reflection and self-awareness allows us to understand our strengths and our areas that we need to improve in leading to continually pers with personal development. Finally, practicing gratitude and mindset, oh, it shifts our focus. It's, it goes to the positive aspects of our lives, reducing stress and increasing overall happiness. And together, these principles, they form really a robust foundation for a fulfilling and a resilient life. I hope that you've gathered at least one even one small thing from today, from listening uh, or from watching the video, from reading the article, make sure you're getting our articles. They come out every single week, goalsforyourlife.com forward slash newsletter. They'll come right to your inbox. We don't send you spam. <laughs> but with this article, I will, I give a lot of free downloads so you can at least apply what you are learning or what you have, you can take notes. So I hope one of those five areas, of course, there are many more, have uh, meant something to you that you can apply and review because they are, they're, they're timeless. They go through our whole lives. We can learn them as I was starting to learn journaling when I was in high school, but they apply all the way through our lives and become almost more important through the years because we go through all sorts of changes. All of us go through those changes. We are human and uh, it's life <laughs> and it's a privilege and I want you to enjoy it. So I hope you've enjoyed today. It's a pleasure being with you, Deborah Johnson, and I love what I do. I hope to see you again next time soon here on our podcast, Women in Have Time. Thanks again for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now. Thank you for joining us. It is because of our wonderful listeners like you that we keep going strong week after week. We'd love it if you'd share and follow us to not miss a single show and even write a review. You can also find all of our articles, products, and links at womenathalftime.com.